this. So I went from this to this to this. What's up, everybody? My name is Ruben Davis, Future Doc, and today I'm going to tell you how I increased my MCAT score by 17 points. We're going to go through my score breakdown, my study strategy, and some tips that I think can help, you know, take your studying and your score to the next level. Let's get into it. All right, so before I really get into everything, you should ask yourself these questions. Who am I? You know, who are you? Are you a disciplined student? Can you dedicate five, six, 10 hours to studying a day? You know, what kind of person are you? What's your personality? Are you a procrastinator? All those things. You want to understand who you are as a person, how you are as a student, and that'll help, you know, guide your thoughts and guide your studying practices and habits as you get to the MCAT. And it also, like, as I'm saying the things that I'm saying, you'll be able to, you know, pick and choose the things that can work best for you. Next, you need to ask yourself, what am I struggling with? Am I struggling with content or am I struggling with, you know, how to take the exam? You know, the, the language, the verbiage of the exam, I'm getting confused and not reading questions thoroughly. So the sort of that test taking strategy or is it a combination of both? For me, it was a combination of both. And so understanding that, knowing that I need to buff up my content, but also get some exam practice. So understand like, you know, what, where do you fall on that spectrum? So once you can answer those questions properly, that will really guide your studying and really allow you to study with purpose and not just kind of be doing things willy nilly that aren't really effective for the type of person that you are and the ways that you learn best. All right, so let's start here just with some full transparency and just let's just get into my score breakdown. All right, so my first score um, I took in 2019, my first uh, exam. And as you can see, I got a 498. A 498 is not good <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. There are some schools whose minimum requirement, like Howard, for example, I think their minimum MCAT is a 494 but I, even at you know some of these less competitive schools uh who might allow even lower maybe even mcats than a 494 you have to have still a lot of other things going for you to make yourself competitive and with this score i was not what did i how did i study for this so i didn't <laughs> really study at all I, I bought a book with that had like five practice exams in it i might only took one if that um, I bought the Kaplan books for content review, but I wasn't really being intentional about it. I kind of went through it kind of very loosely, not really taking good notes um, and not really doing a lot of practice to sort of reinforce that memory. So wasn't very effective studying and my score clearly shows that. Uh, and so let's get into this next one. What what did I do for this next one? I got a 498 uh, for this next one. only a four point increase. and What's crazy about this one is I really felt like I was doing something when I was studying. Like I felt like I was, you know, really dedicated time. Like I, I actually, you know, dedicated time every day to studying. I might have failed in my consistency here and there, but I felt like I was really getting into the content review. But I also was doing, still doing, you know, self uh, studying. So I'm studying on my own with the Kaplan books. But this time I bought AAMC resources, so their practice exams. So I took. You know, some of those, I don't know how many I took, but I probably still didn't take all of them or, you know, do them multiple times. Um, you know, I did the practice questions and all those things. So I was doing that and, you know, I'm thinking I'm doing something. I'm thinking I'm improving after taking it the first time, not really knowing what I was doing, not really knowing what the MCAT was all about. And yeah, you can see these two scores and I do that and then I get to this 511 all right and here's the big difference all right like where you can see the breakdowns the percentiles everything just through the roof a 17 point increase from that first 494 to this 511 all right so let's get into what was the major difference between those first two and this and this last one and to really just put it in one word the major difference practice Practice, 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 practice. I know that's something that's really simple, but honestly is what 
completely changed the game for me. Also, re I recognized that the self-studying wasn't working. I wasn't disciplined enough and I wasn't studying the right things. I wasn't focusing on the high yield things and just me, on, me by myself, I recognized just wasn't enough. Wasn't, wasn't what, I, what, what it needed to be. Therefore, I took a course. Uh, I mentioned some of these things in my previous video. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you go watch that. You can use the link up here to watch that video, just talking about my journey a little bit. But I mentioned that I took a course um, and the course that I took was the blueprint course. Now, this course for me, um, I can't talk about any other ones. I didn't take any other ones. Um, and I'm not, you know, this video isn't sponsored by them, but this course was phenomenal. Um, it gave me everything I need. And here's why I loved Blueprint. Number one, they create a schedule for you. So you put in the date that you're taking the exam, you put in the amount of hours that you want to dedicate towards that exam, uh, towards the studying, and they create a schedule for you based on that information that will emphasize the high yield content that you will need to increase your score. Number two, the videos themselves really were geared towards all types of learners, especially like a visual learner like myself. I'm somebody that like needs to see it. Like when you talk about a concept, like, okay, I want to hear it and then I, I need to see it. You know, I need to see something practical, something tangible. Lastly, the practice exams. Um, it comes with like 10 practice exams that are much harder than the real exam and for me that's actually great because when you do something harder that's harder than what you actually have to do the actual thing feels much easier and that kind of relieves a little bit of anxiety so like when i took like a few mcat like a few blueprint practice exams and i took like the double amc material like i don't know i was able to really just breeze through the double amc material none of that would really matter like all of those great things wouldn't matter if I didn't decide to dedicate time and get disciplined with my studying. So discipline is number one. If you don't have discipline, you gotta find it. Go dig down deep and find some ounce of it. Find whatever that reason is, you know, for you to go to med school, whatever it is, to obtain that discipline and really to, you know, take your studying to the next level. So let's kind of get into my crazy sort of study regimen slash strategy. When I first started the exam, so first of all, let's talk, let, me, let me back, let me talk about my timeline. I started studying like late June and my exam was like mid August. I'm actually, let me look at it, yeah, August 13th. So I didn't have that much time to really go in to try and increase my score. Cause I knew I needed at least a 510 for the school I was aiming for. And so that was my goal, five, like a 510 and if anything and anything better. That's a lot that's missing to get from A to B. And so I'm like, okay, I really got to go in. I got to grind. So my, I started off with doing a lot of content review because I recognized that there was a lack of certain knowledge. And another thing I liked about Blueprint is that they give you those small like facts and little like details, th that one little detail that'll help you answer like a bunch of questions. For example, like the conversion of millimeters of hemoglobin to PSI or whatever that, that conversion was. Um, those like little facts that they'll give you in the videos that they'll emphasize, like you need to know this, are some are things that I wouldn't have, you know, recognized on my own, things I wouldn't have studied on my own or even thought were super important. Um, some of those equations and just little conversion facts and different, different little, little de details that go a long way to really increase your score point by point. The format for the, the course was module, online modules. So I'd watch videos and there'll be practice questions after each video. And then I can do practice, you know, questions per section, where there's like carbohydrates, glycolysis, um, physics, lenses, you know, whatever topic it was, I can take specific like practice questions for those and watch videos specifically on those. Um, so I focus a lot on content, especially the content that I knew that I was struggling with 
that were there were a lot of guys so a lot of Kim and Fizz um, as you saw like in my score breakdowns those that was like my weakest section so I really you know focused on those but after about like maybe a week or two of that maybe maybe longer maybe a little longer maybe three weeks of that I started my super rigorous strategy here my super rigorous rigorous schedule and this is what i recommend to anybody okay and this is where that practice comes in i took a practice exam every three days and this is how i did it so i took a practice exam let's say monday then tuesday i do i'd review that exam you know go over the questions i got wrong and even the questions i got right to see if i got it right because i knew it or i got it right because i got lucky and so I went over that content, saw what I needed to work on. Then the third day, I watched the modules based off that, that review. Then I took another exam. And then I just repeated that cycle all the way up to the day before my exam. I didn't just take a break and stop. No, I did that all the way up to the day before I took that exam. And I, for me, I know for a fact that is really what made all the difference because my stamina for the exam just skyrocketed for in my practice i would finish like the kimmy phase section for example with like 10 minutes left maybe even more sometimes 10 15 minutes left on the clock whereas the first time i took the exam i ran out of time i couldn't even answer all the questions i ran out of time you know because i didn't have that stamina i didn't have that reading fluency and understanding of what i needed to do and so I, that's truly what made the difference. I was able to read questions faster. I was able to, you know, after a chem phys section, like I wasn't like just completely drained and dead. I was able to push through and get through all the sections without, you know, much of a hiccup and my brain was adapted for that. So that's why I'm saying that practice is just like so important. And like full length exams, like don't do, I mean, you can do half, maybe you start half, you know, if you have the time, maybe start half and do full. But I recommend just every time, just do full, full exams and just go all out every time because that practice is really what makes the difference. This, this strategy is especially good, I feel like for both, honestly, for both, whether you're start struggling with content or whether you're struggling with like test taking strategy or uh, just you know how to take the exam how to answer questions like how when they're asking this question what do they really mean because you get practice at reading the questions and then understanding so like it's second nature to you so when you read it you just know exactly what it is and they recycle a lot of the same kind of questions so i got to a point where i'm like i'm recognizing the type of like i'm reading the passage like i'm the type of person i read the passage first and i highlight um and i didn't do that before in my first two exams so I, I picked up that practice later on that was something that like they talked about in the blueprint like highlighting certain you know the certain things like i highlight all the numbers so i don't have to like search for them and different things uh but you, I started reading questions and I'm already knowing what kind of questions they're going to ask me. I'm like, oh, they're probably going to, oh, they're mentioning this. They're probably going to ask me a question about that. And I'm already starting to think about it and postulate it in my mind. You know, if I'm looking at a graph, I'm, I can read the graphs a lot quicker because I'm used to the type of graphs that they have. So it's just, it's just that practice. I just think the main thing is the practice. Just doing it over and over and over and over again is really what's going to help take that jump like you have to have the discipline like you have to find that passion find that whatever to to put that to practice but definitely if you if you can't do it like for you know months on end like let's say you're taking your it's january and you're taking your exam in like may maybe not do that you know the whole time maybe you can have it a little more interspersed than you know what i did i was more so on the clock but definitely i feel like the month before your exam i would really just go in and you know do do this strategy of every three four days taking a practice exam reviewing doing content and then another exam so yeah well that's it for me um i hope you like this video and you learned something if you did please give that like button a smash make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this make sure you comment down below any any study strategies that you have any questions um and any other recommendations for videos that you'd like me to do in the future. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next one.